when Moshe is critical of the Jewish people at the end of 40 years in the desert Moshe says you have questioned God you've doubted God you have tested God 10 times you're so bad You know, 10 times in 40 years, that doesn't sound so bad. 10 arguments in 40 years of marriage, I think that's pretty impressive. If that's the entire criticism, we got nothing to be ashamed of. 10 times. Yeah, you make it sound like it was all in one month. It was over 40 years. It wasn't the same people each time. So what is, what is with this criticism? Secondly, when the Jews made the golden calf, which itself needs a little explanation, But when the Jews made the golden calf, Moshe defends the Jews and gains God's forgiveness for the people by saying they're a stiff-necked people. Forgive them. They're a stiff-necked people. Why does that bring forgiveness? And what kind of an argument is that anyway? The argument... They're, they're ignorant. They're not very bright. Okay, I can understand that. You have to forgive people. They're not smart. They're not intelligent. They're not learned. They don't know what they're doing. Then the sin is unintentional, which is a very different kind of sin, and it's forgivable. But to say, oh, they, they only sin out of stubbornness, what kind of... What kind of an excuse is that? They're a stiff-necked people. Which almost, it's almost like saying, they're going to continue to sin. And that's why they should be forgiven. And really, what was it about the people? You see the plagues that brought you out of Egypt. You were there at the splitting of the sea. And you still wonder, what are we going to drink? There's no water here. So God makes water come from a rock. Convinced? Can you calm down now? Can you trust a little bit? No. How about beef? Can he give us beef? Oh yeah, sure, he made water come out of a rock, but can he bring beef? What kind of people are these? And then they run out of water because Miriam died. And all of a sudden they say, hey, where are we going to get water from? It doesn't make sense. Every time there's a little bit of a crisis that takes a little divine intervention, they lose hope. What is that? The spies come back and say, can't do it. Sure, God can make water come from a rock. He can make food come from heaven. He can make the sea split, but he cannot capture this land. We can't accept the story at face value. We're not talking about damaged, mentally damaged people. So let's take a a, a better view of the whole thing. We are all descendants of Jacob, of Yaakov. Yaakov was afraid of confronting his brother Esau. Why was he afraid? He says, I am afraid because I am humbled by your kindness. God's kindness. 
Kotainti Mikolach Sodim. I am humbled by all of your kindness. Which means, the kindness you have given me so far is way more than I deserve. So I cannot hope for more blessings and divine intervention in the future. I've used up all my chips. If I ever had any chips. I deserve some blessings because my father was a big tzaddik and my grandfather was a big tzaddik. But I think I've used up those merits too. You have been very kind to me. Now I'm afraid. Yaakov's descendants have the same attitude. We didn't ask God for the miracles in Egypt. We didn't ask God to split the sea. But once all of that happened, the people were humbled. How much can you ask of God? Now we're in a desert and there's nothing to drink. There's no water. Expect God to perform another miracle? Why? By what merit? So now we got to find our own solution. So they come to Moshe and they say, what are we going to do? And if Moshe would say, rely on God, their answer would be, you know, you need to deserve miracles. You can't just expect them. So it's not they doubted God's ability. What they were worried about is how infinite God's kindness is going to be. We got what we deserved. We got more than we deserved. And now we need more. But how can you expect to get it? Esau, on the other hand, had a very different attitude. No matter what he had, no matter how much success he saw, he thinks he deserves more. That God owes him. So this is the nature of the people in the desert. They didn't question God's abilities. They were convinced with each passing miracle they were convinced that that was the last one. We are overdrawn at the bank. There's no more there for us. We haven't done enough to deserve more miracles. So it's really a compliment to the people. So what does Moshe say? They are a stiff-necked people. Not a criticism, but a compliment. What does it mean to be a stiff-necked people? There are some people who are very quick to believe. You tell them things are going to be good, that's all they need to hear. They're, they're fine. Why will it be good? How will it be good? They, they like hearing good news, and when they hear it, they accept it without any further questions. The Jewish people are a stiff-necked people. God keeps promising, I will always take care of you. I will always be there for you. If you need a miracle, I will be there. And the Jews say, but we don't deserve it. Shouldn't we do a little more? to deserve your miracles? Stiff neck. To put it in different words, some people are easily seduced. A few miracles, a few messages, a few compliments, that's it. They're sold. Whatever you want, you got them. But then there's a stiff-necked people. Miracles are nice. Kind words are nice. Thank you for the compliments. But what kind of relationship are we having here? 
You're just going to do miracles for us? That's it? So we're literally sheep, and you're our shepherd. That's it. Stiff-necked people. We're always looking for more to deepen the relationship. Yes, superficially, it looks good. Took us out of Egypt. Very nice. Very nice. Even split the sea for us. But who are you to us? What about long term? So they kept challenging God, not out of a lack of faith, but out of a different kind of faith. So a stiff-necked people are not easily impressed. So Moshe says, forgive them. It's worth it. You'll put up with their stiff-neckedness because when the relationship develops, they will be powerful. They will be amazingly loyal. 2,000 years of suffering won't shake them. This relationship is worth all the effort. That's what Moshe was saying. There are people who believe in you as long as things go well. As soon as things go sour or go south, they give up on you. They go look for other gods. But these people, they're stiff-necked. They'll fight you to the end because they want the deepest, the truest, and the most permanent kind of relationship. So at the end of 40 years, Moshe says to them, you're so difficult, 10 times, which means you deepened your relationship with God ten levels. Other people would have been content with the first. He took us out of Egypt. That's it. He's our hero. Whatever he wants, we'll do. It's almost, almost like they went ahead and made the golden calf just to see how committed God is to this relationship. And when God forgives them, even Moshe says, uh, you forgave us this time, but uh, how about next time? Will there be a next time? If we sin again, is there more forgiveness? How deep is this relationship? How many la layers can we peel away? and become closer rather than a stranger. So we're talking here about a very profound process of, of merging, of closeness, of going beyond simple faith. Stiff-necked people manage to get 10 layers of closeness in those 40 years. And after that, there was no way that Jews can shake God. We are too deep. We're in too deep. Destruction of one temple, destruction of a second temple. You'd think we'd give up. No. Nope. Not when you've got ten levels of closeness. Now we expect God to respond with 10 gestures of his to show us his side of the relationship. When Mashiach comes, we are told we will sing the 10th song. And then our relationship will be finished. I mean, complete. If you enjoyed this conversation or this topic and you're looking for more information or you want to hear it again from another angle, 
there is a way to do that. And that is in this book. It's all there. Order it from Amazon. You can read it, reread it, and share it.